Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part three of my JavaScript programming tutorial. Today, I'm going to cover JavaScript object-oriented programming. So prepare for a little bit of an insanity here, because JavaScript handles object-oriented programming in a way that is completely different than pretty much any other language. Okay, so basically what I got here on the screen is the basic HTML and where I'm going to put my JavaScript code. Now I'm going to get into the basics of all the nomenclature that goes behind object-oriented programming. An object just stores variables and the functions needed to manipulate those variables all in one place. A class defines what variables and functions each object will have. Technically, JavaScript really doesn't have classes, though, but we'll get into that if you have a background in object-oriented programming and other languages. Properties are the names given to variables that are stored inside of objects, and methods are the name that is provided to functions that are part of an object. So a variable, in, if it is stored in an object, is called a property. You can call it a variable, I don't really particularly care, but just so you understand that you're supposed to call variables properties if they par are part of an object, and you're supposed to call functions methods if they're part of an object. And to create an object, you create a function with the object's name, and I'm going to show it to you here right now. Basically, if you want to create an object, you come in and you type in function. And let's say I'm going to create a definition for an object called animal. Then I just follow that up with the parentheses that would accept any properties that are being sent to this guy. And then what I do is I define all of the properties that I want all of my animal objects to contain. And this is a reference to an object that you create. Doesn't quite make sense. It will here in a second. So what I'm going to say is every animal object that I create has to have a name. And by default, it's going to have no name. And I'm also going to say that every animal has to make a sound of some sort. And by default, it's going to grr. And all also, an owner. No, owner. Okay, so that's what I'm saying every animal object should contain. Well, that's it right there. I just defined that guy, and this is what we call a constructor. And a constructor function is called every single time a new animal object is created. Again, if you're not quite getting it, don't worry. We're going to go over this a bunch of times, three times actually. Now what you want to do is you want to add the methods or functions needed for the class and how you do that in JavaScript is through the use of what is called the prototype. So if I want to create a method that every single animal object is going to have, I have to do exactly this. The name of the object followed by the word prototype followed by set owner. And what this function is simply going to do is it is going to set the value for this variable right here. Then you call function and then a property that this function is going to accept. This is how you create methods in JavaScript. Kind of weird, I know. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to check to make sure that a new owner value has actually been passed. And yes, I know there's countless different ways to do this. I'm just choosing this way because that's what I feel like doing at this point in time. What I'm doing here is I am checking to make sure that this guy has really been passed. That's what it's doing. Sort of an error protection. If it has, what I'm going to say is that I want the value of owner for this specific new animal object that's created to be set to the value that's been passed over, right like that. Otherwise, I want to warn the person and say to them, please enter a valid owner. So this is how you create your first method using JavaScript. And the name of this method is going to be set owner. And what it simply does, it's kind of silly how they force you to call it a method even though they refer to it as a function. But either way, this method here will accept a property that is sent to it called new owner. And if it is actually passed and defined, it will then set the owner for this specific object that was created. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a model different times. And this is also a reference to what they call encapsulation, which basically means whenever you create functions such as set, and I'm going to actually create another one here so I can refer to them both at the same time, animal prototype followed by the name of the new method you want. And this method isn't going to have any properties, so fine. We'll just leave that closed just like that. And what it's going to do is return whatever the current owner's name is. And I know I don't have to error check this because what did I do? I put an owner in there by default, so that's fine. 
And that's it. So that's how you create this. Now in regards to encapsulation. Encapsulation is, and you can kind of knock it off in JavaScript, but basically what it's doing is it's saying that if you want to change the value of any of these properties inside of this object, you're going to have to do it through one of these functions. So if you want to set the name for the owner, you're going to have to call a function called setOwner to do so. And I'm going to show you how to create more of these guys. Actually, you come in here just to save time. I'm going to create methods to set all of these different values inside of here. Boink. So I need to set also the name for the animal. And this is going to be called new name. I have to change this to name and this to name and this to name. Please enter a valid name. And you can see this is going to change this property up here. That's what this function is doing. Then what we're going to do is provide them a way to get the new name. Do that and then return name right like that. And then we're going to come down. We have owner and we have name. So that leaves only one other thing, which is going to be sound. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna say set sound, new sound, sound. And this is the sound the animal is going to make. Please enter a valid sound. There we go. We created all of the methods needed for this object called animal. And this is a definition. Now I'm gonna show you how to actually come in here and create additional animals. So let's say we wanna create an object called dog, which is going to be of type animal. Well, I just come in here, type in dog equals to and new, you have to type that in and then follow that up with animal, which is the name of this function you defined up here. And then these methods, what you're doing is you're assigning them to this guy, all right? So the new dog object that you just created is gonna automatically have a name, a sound and an owner and also have access to all of these different functions to both set as well as get access to all of these different properties inside here. And then what I'm gonna do since the object's been created is I'm going to call the method set name and I'm gonna pass it some attributes that I want set for this specific dog object. So I'm just passing these guys over here and I'm gonna leave this empty on purpose and then I'm gonna write out the screen by accessing the get versions of these methods right here and print that information out the screen. And you can see that it printed out the error message here because I didn't enter a value for sound, which is what I wanted it to do. And then it printed out spot. You can see, here, let me come over here. It's printed out spot because that's the value that I entered. Then it printed out Paul, which is the owner. And then it printed out Gur, which is the default value for sound since I didn't define sound whenever I entered this in here. And just to say, let's just go wolf. See, I defined spot, spot printed out because I called get name. I defined Paul, that printed out, and wolf because I defined all of three of those different things. So that's how you create an object, and this is your object right here, which is dog, and it's of type animal. Now, I'm gonna go through exactly what inheritance is. And just to divide these guys, put this in there, doink. Okay, great. Inheritance is whenever you create a new object that inherits all the properties and methods that you defined in another object. It just borrows them. And how you do it is you just use the function keyword again. And let's say I wanna make a cat this time. And I just wanna create one additional property called mood. And I'm just gonna say happy, because all cats are always happy. And if you guys out there know anything about JavaScript in regards to object-oriented programming, you're saying right now, ha ha, he just messed up. No, I didn't. What you need to do whenever you are going to inherit all the properties and methods created in the animal class is start off with the class that you want to inherit from, followed with a dot, and then call, and then this. And I'm going to get a little bit more into what this is. What this is, is a reference to the next cat object that you create. That's what this is. That's what this stands for. And what this is here is a call to the constructor that you created, the animal constructor, which is just the function that's run every single time you create a new animal object. So automatically this is the way that all your cat objects are now going to have names, sounds, and owners even though you do not define them. And they're also going to have set owners and get owners and so forth in regards to methods automatically but you have to make sure that you call this specific function. This is actually forcing the original animal constructor to be executed. That's what's going on there. Then what you have to do is actually set the animal class as the super class for the object or class called cat. And how you do that is just follow this guy, cat prototype is equal to new animal. And if you didn't do this, what this would do is it would actually make cat 
a subclass of the main object superclass, which I'm not going to get into. This stuff can get really complicated really, really easy, so I'm just going to stick with that. And then you're also going to have to assign the right constructor to this object, and the constructor for the cat object is going to be this one. In JavaScript, you have to actually define that. And again, a reference to cat prototype, and here you're defining the constructor to be of type cat. And then, if you want to actually come in here and create a new set of mood methods for this new cat object. Go cat proto type get mood is equal to function and just define it. Return this mood. Just that easy. And you would be able to set that also in precisely the same way. Just cat prototype dot set mood equal to function new mood if it has been passed over. Scroll this up and I'm actually just going to copy and paste that in there and then just change these to moods. And there you are. So that's how to inherit all the properties and methods from another object that you previously created or another class that you previously created, and then add additional new methods and new properties. And then if you want to call this guy, no problem. Just start off with var. And let's say I want to call my new cat object, Sophie, new cat, boom, just created it. And then if I want to come in here and call all the different functions, I can do that right like that. Copy paste, and let's change the owner to me sound meow and i forgot my mood crazy there you are and then if i want to print them out again i'm just going to grab this from up here change this to sophie sophie and i'm going to type in mood here and you can see sophie derek meow crazy all of them printed out on the screen another thing you can do in with object oriented programming in javascript is to actually check if one object was instantiated or was created in a way based off of another class that's what, what that means. And let's say I wanted to see if Sophie is an instance of, that's how you figure out if Sophie is actually a cat object. And you can see the true came back here on the right side of the screen because what is really weird and what will actually confuse you, document, right? Like let's say we call type of, which is supposed to return what type of data type this is. Well, if you thought that whenever you type this in, you were going to be presented with class, you would be wrong. It's actually a function. Why? Because that's what it's called inside of JavaScript. See? Function cat? Well, I just asked it. What is cat? Well, you said it was a function. See, welcome to the wonderful, crazy world of object-oriented programming inside of JavaScript. However, if you type in Sophie, object comes back onto the screen. See? A little crazy. Another object-oriented programming thing, and from this point on, the rest of the tutorial, you might not understand a single thing I'm saying because I'm doing this really to answer a lot of questions that are going to be brought up by people that understand object-oriented programming if you have no idea what it is or this is the first tutorial I've ever seen on it some other things are going to be confusing so I leave you with that another concept in object-oriented programming is what is called method overloading what method overloading is normally you can create multiple different versions or multiple different methods that all have a different number of attributes and the programming language if it follows the basic principles of object-oriented programming will call the right method depending upon how many attributes are entered when the method is called so let's say the first one will handle or will be called if just one attribute is sent in and the second one will be called if two attributes are passed and the third method will be called if three attributes are passed. This is called method overloading. It allows for multiple different methods to be called based off of how many attributes are sent. And also it can be based off of a couple other different things. Well, if you wanted to do this inside of JavaScript, you technically could. And this is where the world becomes crazy. All right, do you remember how up here I was checking to see if this value is defined or not? Well, just to save time, I'm actually going to copy this. What you can do inside of JavaScript, however, you probably never will do this, but this is me trying to force method overloading. Let's say you wanted to create a method called set stuff, and you wanted to provide the option of accepting these guys if at all possible. What you have to understand is inside of JavaScript, you can ask for these different properties and if they are not passed, an error is not thrown. Well, then what you can do is actually create new versions of this method based off of which attributes were sent. And how you would do that is using this, in my situation here, I'm using type of to do this. So I'm gonna say is new name defined 
And I'm going to continue to do this for all of these properties that could be sent. And I'm going to say also owner. All right. And inside of JavaScript, what I'm going to do now is I'm saying that if all of these different properties were sent, what I actually want to do is create a new version of the set stuff function. And you can do this. And it's completely crazy. So I can actually go cat auto type right like that set stuff and I might as well just copy this and recreate this whole entire function and this sort of on the fly creates custom methods based off of which properties were sent whenever the object was first created. That probably just confused the heck out of you, but this is the basis of how you would do method overloadings inside of JavaScript though, just so you understand that. And like I said, just like before, you would just recreate this function because the way JavaScript operates is the last version of the function that is created with this specific name. So basically, the way JavaScript operates is it says, okay, there's a new function called set stuff. And then whenever it comes down here, this doesn't trigger an error whenever you create a new set stuff function. What it does instead is it overwrites this set stuff function. So that just gives you the beginnings of understanding exactly where you would go if you wanted to do method overloading. And the final thing is what is called polymorphism. What you have to understand in regards to polymorphism is that because JavaScript is loosely typed, polymorphism is possible, but in it's extremely different in regards to its usage in comparison to other object-oriented programming languages. And just to explain exactly how polymorphism works in most programming languages, like let's say you create a function this time. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual objects or anything. And you define, this is the way it works in most languages, not JavaScript. You define that this function is going to be passed a property of type animal. You could then go on and print out the screen, the name, the owner, etc. Well, in most programming languages, the way it works is because cat inherited all of its properties and so forth from animal. What you would be able to do in other languages is to pass the cat object, even though it is expecting an animal object to be passed, and it would automatically just work. And it would come in here, and let's just copy this. So what it would do is, in this function, it would also be considered, okay, I want an a object to be passed to this of type animal. And you pass an object that inherited from animal, which would be cat, to this function. And what it would automatically do in object-oriented programming languages is to actually automatically come in here and make sure that the right methods are actually executed. That's how polymorphism works inside of almost all of the languages. And the reason why that is cool is other languages force you to define the type being passed to the function. Since JavaScript doesn't force you to define the type, PM technically works because you can pass anything, but it loses a lot of what makes polymorphism kind of exciting and interesting in other object-oriented programming languages. So there's an overview of object-oriented programming inside of JavaScript. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. If I did, just disregard the method overloading part and the polymorphism part and just really understand how to create methods and variables because that's pretty much how object-oriented programming works with JavaScript. If you have any questions or comments, which you probably will if you sat through this whole thing, leave them below. Otherwise, till next time.